the thought of I need to change things up. I want to change my life. I want to. I want something better. And one of the things that came into my head was if I get on Big Brother, that will be able to change things up. You are live on Channel Four. Please do not swear. Alright. Alright. Anthony, you are the winner. I was. I got told to meet at a random location in London, and then I was taken to France and I was hidden in France for two weeks before the show started because back then they didn't want anyone known yeah, who was yeah. on the show. In reflection, um, when I'd done Big Brother, it was a very, very extreme taste of fame. I got catapulted into living in a house for three months and then coming out, everyone knowing your name, making money that I would never, that I'd never ever made before. I uh, I became a, a 70s disco dancer, which was just, honestly, that, that job was just ridiculous it was unbelievable when you're younger you're not aware of your ego and obviously I, I was like well I've, I've won Big Brother and um, you know I, I don't want to go back to I'm, I don't want to go back to a day job before how dark did it get for you yeah it got it got it got really like was really it dark. like a lot of time on your own drinking yeah drugs turned, all that yeah, type of stuff turned to all that do you ever regret things you've done on TV so today we are joined by Anthony Hutton first and foremost mate I want to ask how you doing I'm awesome. Are you good? Very good, thank you, yeah. No, no worries at all. I know a lot of people know you from Big Brother. Obviously, how many years ago was it, mate? About 15 years ago or something now? 2005. 2005. I'm useless at maths, so no. you do the maths. <laughs> so obviously, <laughs> like, you've got on to do bigger and better things from Big Brother. Um, but I want to take it back, mate. A lot of people don't know who you are as well. That will be tuning in and listening to especially the people who are now into things like Love Island and the new seasons of Big Brother. Anthony Hutton might be a name that they might not even know, especially the new people who are on social and stuff. Yeah. And it certainly wasn't as big as what it is now um, in terms of social media. How did the whole Big Brother journey come about? So the, jur the journey actually comes from... And it, this might sound like I'm kind of going right down a, another direction, but it... It stems from I wanted to be a footballer mm -hmm. as a young lad. Like I was, as a kid, in uh, you know, in at school, I was so dedicated. All everything went into me being obsessed with trying to be a footballer. I loved football so much and was obsessed with trying to be a footballer. Like like most lads, that that dream doesn't come off. Yeah. Um. So I basically left school with no education. And I remember signing her on the door. I am around about 18 years old. And the first job that kind of came up was a postman. Right. And that, that was pretty much lingering, lingering around that. That was pretty much the best I could do because I didn't have a trade. didn't really have any education. Um, and it, didn't, it sounded like, oh, yeah, be, that'll be an all right job, you know, yeah, walking around. And um, so I was a postman. And I'd maybe done that for a year year and a half and I remember thinking is this is this just is this it is, is this going to be it, the make of you it, right. it, am I, there was bloke so I spoke to um, who'd done it for 20 years mm -hmm. and that that didn't sit with me um, I was all I've you know I would consider myself as being driven um, and the, th the thought of I need to change things up I want to change my life. I want to. I want something better. And one of the things that came into my head was, if I get on Big Brother, that will be able to change things up. Financially, so, or just in... What's happening, guys? I hope you're enjoying the episode so far. If you are, please hit that like, hit the subscribe button, and press the notification bell so you don't miss another episode. Yeah, to, there was... There was a number... Of, it, I wanted... To, I thought it could change things financially. Um, there was definitely there was definitely a side of me that is a showman. Mm -hmm. I'm an extrovert. I'm also an introvert as well. But I'm I would you know I, was, I would definitely say I was a bit of an extrovert. Yeah. Um, and I was a huge fan of the show as well. I right, remember I, rem yeah. I remember watching the first ever the first ever one with Craig, and it right. it was you know it was extreme. It was gripping TV, and from the first one. I became a fan and that kind of basically ended up snowballing into me not happy as a postman. No disrespect to anyone who's a postman, by the way. Of course. But it, 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 that wasn't for me. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted more. 
and that's where the kind of this um, this idea of coming on Big Brother and when I remember going on, I remember going to the auditions. There was very much, there was very much a, a like a venom of determination of me really want to get on this show and I'm I'm a big believer in you know if you want something you will get it from my years of experience I'm 41 years old 41 years old now and um there's a there's a lot I've done anything that I've done that I've really want to do I've ended you know I've ended up doing it um <coughs> And I think there's a lot of there's a lot to be said for just determination, being relentless, um, and you know obsessive. I remember, you know, be I remember I used to go to St James's Park, mm. and I was I was a season ticket holder with me mate John. We were in the Gallagher end, um, back when it was like you were standing, yeah, and yeah. I always remember um, just oh, I want to play here someday. I really want to play here, and the Big Brother experience actually give me that opportunity. I'd done a, a football program called The Match, right? Where I got to, I ended up getting to play at St James's in front of the fifty two thousand, and I'd done that two year, two years off the trot, and not to brag, but I got man of the match both years, and I remember it's a little brag. It, yeah, <laughs> it is. A li- it is a little, a little, a little one, but it's something I'm proud of, though. Yeah, of course. Um, and. I remember thinking, you know what, you weren't a footballer, but somehow, somehow you still managed to get there and have your little taste of... Did it feel as good, though? Oh, mate, it, that, you know, I've done the Big Brother experience, but honestly, doing the, doing the match, that it was on Sky One, and it was basically, the format of it was a bunch of... It was a bit, it was, it was a bit similar to Soccer Aid. Right, OK. So the, the guy who, the executive producer, the owner of Soccer Aid, he was the... He was, the executive producer of the match. It was it was his idea, and it was so it was a bit similar. But for me, it was a little bit of a better format because the format was you had um, a bunch of kind of like celebrities all trialing to get on this team, mm-hmm. which was the celebrity team, um, and you know part of the show people would get kicked off. The weaker players would get kicked off, and then you you trained like a professional. We were trained at St James's Park. Um, in their training ground for a week. The week before we had a trip, one of the years we were training in Marbella. That was just so like, so it was like, wanna... you got that life of actually, and we, you know, we we, we really bonded as yeah. a unit. And then right on the, the final day was the match mm-hmm. where we got to play at St. James's Park against a group of ex-professionals. So to play, so to do, so, and then 52,000, Geordie fans, it was it was breathtaking. I remember, I'll never forget the first year I'd done it. We got picked up from the ground. The team bus was there and there was a helicopter following us all the way to St. James's Park. And then we got out at St. James's Park. <laughs> and, it, and it looked, and it was literally like um, any one of my, anyone lingering around my age will probably remember it who, who were football fans. It was literally like a match day. So to come out of... It, you really it was a for me at any way it, like it, hairs it, on your neck it was here. it was something like wow this is just like this is just epic i know you mentioned with the when you were a postman and stuff and obviously you know again not 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 going anybody who who has that path in life because again there's <clears throat> if you're happy you're happy yeah um but i'm definitely from the minds that you are i feel like you just want more and i've always been the same i'm 33 now um but i've always wanted to kind of i've always wanted more as i was younger and a bit of a side note it's funny because uh I actually auditioned for Big Brother twice. Oh, did you? And I got quite far through the yeah. process. When I was about 18 and when I was about 21, um, I think there was about six rounds of audition at the time. And they were like, you've basically got all the way through here. We've got to pick out, I think it was 30 people that they were picking to put in like a halfway house or like a mock-up type of thing. All right, okay. And um, Beforehand, and obviously I didn't get the call. And then a few years later, two or three years later, I got a bit further still. But I remember making a decision because I remember going through the process a second time and I actually felt a little bit icky. And I don't know what it was. I just felt like, am I older now? Like, do I even want this? And when I look back now as a 33-year-old with a business and stuff and a, and a, little, and a daughter, a two-year-old, I look back and I think, you know what? Like, I'm pleased I didn't get the name of the guy who was on that. Yeah. And that's not, again, you've done it, you've lived it, you've, you've, you've won the show, you know, yeah. you've, you've went on to be loved by, you know, your, your, your county, your people in your area and stuff and you're well-known. And, and I think you came up 
cross quite respectful certainly from the memories that I had when you were on the show um, and I was only a young lad when I seen it you've so obviously forgot few, a few of the things I, a few <laughs> of the things that the old jacuzzi and all that <laughs> stuff but but I also think that obviously you've went on to become a barber you've did things like from a professional level you've went on to do things which the average guy from Big Brother probably wouldn't do so for me when I look at you I think entrepreneur I don't think reality star I don't think someone who was fame hungry I think this is a guy who's knew there was something burning. They wanted something more. How do I kind of get that outlet? Big Brother was one of them at the time. If it hadn't been Big Brother, I believe you probably would have did something else. Talk to us a little bit about your kind of financial situation before the show, Anthony, because, um, you know, like obviously a postman. I know you live with your mum and your, your nana, didn't you, at the time as well? Yeah. What was what was that like? Did you were you skint? Did you have now? <laughs> what, what was it like, honestly? No, I know I you was... said you signed on the door and stuff. <laughs> yeah, so that was when I was uh, like... I think when I, I was eighteen, no, before before the um, I'm la- I'm laughing because it just takes me back. So before I went, there's a there's a there's another side U turn to the to the postman job. So after the when I was kind of like you know thinking of all this, you know I need to change up. Um, I uh, I became a seventies disco dancer. <laughs> in yeah which oh which were yeah which was just honestly that that job was just ridiculous it was unbelievable I, i'll never forget the day I, I said this when i got when i got married um when i was doing my speech i'll never forget my mum and grandma's face where i'd come in from being a postman and told them sacking this i'm sacking the post office job i've just got a job as a 70s disco dancer and, that, and, and and next door uh, after I'd started doing it for a few, a few weeks, next door asked, "Why is there a wig on the line, all the, all the time?" <laughs> so I'll talk you through the the ju- so the 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 seventies disco job was um it was a dance a dance troupe called Stretch Limos Boogie Express. Right. My name was Chico and Portante from Puerto Rico. There were each it was a it was all males, mm-hmm. all all very much um of the same type of lad. We were all very much laddie lads. Mm-hmm. There was like there was a cowboy, there was um, there was uh, a, a a guy called Bud who um, he was this black guy who was just the coolest best dancer you've ever seen with a real afro about this big, mm-hmm. and we basically um, we danced. I done C nightclub on a Monday night. Again, my age group will, will know exactly what nightclub I'm talking about. I know where it is. Though. It was Riverside then, was it? Oh, was it yeah, now? yeah, it Riverside was C, now. and then it was Riverside. Yeah. That was on a Monday night. Then I on a Wednesday night I danced in Sunderland at a nightclub called Beach. Right, I I know that on the corner. Yeah, around the corner from here. Thursday was a visa in South Shields, right. and then we uh, and then we went and then the same night we done a nightclub called Deep in Whitley Bay, and then Friday Saturday was up in Scotland, and I um, it was all it was all cash and hand. So and I I, did, I I didn't pay rent. I didn't. Me, I me mom, was me mum and grandma. I was a, you know I was a bit spoilt. Aye. So they never really. So I, f- financially I I was all right. But it was a, back then. You know all you all you care about is clothes and beer tokens. Aye. And and that was it. So I was I was happy as Larry. But the the um, being on stage and being a dancer, that definitely kind of like. Um, that definitely confirmed, like, this is definitely more me than being a postman. I was going to say, you've got to be kind of extrovert to do that type of stuff. Well, I've always kind of, I've always loved dancing, and it was so random how I got into it. There was one of my best mates who I, like, lived, literally lived next to, a lad called Alan, who played Chip, Chip Rockwell. A little shout out to Chip, a little shout out to Chip there. Because um, we're, all, we're all still great mates. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're, oh, yeah. Still, we're, all still, we're all still keep in touch. Um, he randomly got the dancing job, um... He was actually on a night out in Newcastle, mm-hmm. um, and the show, the dance show, was on there. And he basically got on stage and started dancing. And we both, like as youngins, loved dancing. Mm-hmm. And anyway, he got the job. Started telling me about this dancing job he's got. Saying honestly, it's just like it's meant. Like we've got, you know, it's it's fantastic for girls. Mm-hmm. We're on stage. We're staying in hotels. It's good money. And I was like, mate, you need you need to get me involved in this. Yeah. And then shoot. And then sh- and then sure enough. <laughs> Actually, I auditioned in Sunderland. So I Did remember, you? Yeah, so I remember, I'll never forget this, right? So he told me, um, he, t- he got in touch with me, he went, he went, the boss wants to, like, he wants another lad. Um, the auditions are in um, Beach in Sunderland. Right. So that day, I went to 
went to the Dunmi post office job, running around delivering mail, and then um, turned up at Beach. There was a couple of lads there who were also were auditioning, and we danced to Disco Inferno. Or oh, like, <laughs> <laughs> during the day, any clips during, of that? No, none, none of the, none of the audition. Yeah, yeah. Uh, during the day, sober, um, but um, I've always loved. Literally, me, 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 mum kind of brought us up on disco. I've always and loved. How have you got the balls to do that as a young lad? Like, are you naturally confident? Um, some, some, like if you, if you, if you, to, if you talk to me, and you know, if you speak to me, you might think I'm confident. But my, my. My outlook on it is someone who's, say, shy and nervous and someone who's confident, they probably feel the same things. The shy person might shy away from it and go, mm, don't want to do that. Mm-hmm. The confident person will go, no, I'm doing it, and push yeah, forward. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's, that's how I look at it. Mm-hmm. Um, but probably as a, as a kid, I, I always had, you know, um, really supportive parents. Mm-hmm. Me, you know, me, me mum and grandma were always just like, you know, yeah, you do it like nothing was a problem, or they always they always watched me play football. Every a, anything that I ever done, I always had great support. So I think that's probably played a factor as played a factor as well. I think it's funny how it works because, like, for me personally, mate, like I so it's, this is a mad one, but I hate being on camera, and I've said it a, a few times in the podcast. That I say it to, to Mike, the video guy, quite a bit, and I like for me doing this podcast is like a it's like a bit of a personal challenge because like. I'd, I'll not watch them back. I, right. I kind of bring myself to doing that. But what I'll do do is, like, I'll learn that actually it's not hard, like it's not as hard as what you think. Mm-hmm. And it's not that I can't talk to people. I've always kind of had a bit of chat. I've never struggled in, in anything else other than I think it's like a self-conscious thing. We all have that though, don't and we? It, yeah, but I feel like there's a lot of people who I know who want to do podcasts and they don't do it because of the nerves. And it's like, ultimately, if you want, if you want anything, you've got to go through that shit period of just doing it and doing it and doing it. Obviously, with Big Brother, it's funny because... When I was going through that phase of wanting to be on the TV, in that setup, I didn't feel any nerves at all. Even through the audition, where you've got to do the daft tasks and this that, and the other, like even in the diary room mock up and all that, like none of that phased us. Maybe right. it would have changed on TV. Now, I want to go into that a little bit. Obviously, going through that process, can you tell us a bit about that? Because there'll be, I guarantee now, because Big Brother's on TV, there's going to be hundreds of thousands of people wanting to be like you, how you were then, good looking lad, on a show coming out, few quid, some peers, all, all the bonuses and stuff that come with it. What's the process like? What, in terms of the actual audition process? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh- if you don't know by now, I run a business called The Content PT. I create content for influencers, PTs, online coaches, and fitness brands all around the world. So if you are someone who's in need for sexy content for your social media, or you really want to maintain a competitive edge in your industry, drop me a DM on Instagram. Um- It'd probably be similar, um, similar to yours. So, like like you, I actually auditioned a couple of times and got far, but didn't get Did on. You? Yeah, um, and then I remember um, the final time. The the final time I got on, I was coming from a, like a like a like a fucking animal. Like I was <laughs> like, I'm fucking steamrolling this audition, and I really like just let let loose. Um, the other times. You know, the more the more you do something, the better you the better you are at yeah. it, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Um, but in terms of the auditions, honestly, mine was um, there wasn't that much audition process. I literally auditioned the first day, um, queued up in Manchester. Um, the it was like a, the way producers were seeing producers were seeing people in say groups of ten, and they were getting ri- rid of like. The majority of people, maybe two from each group, were going through. Yeah, of course. They asked me what I'd done, what my name was. Obviously, being a seventies disco dancer, that immediately had a little bit of you know salt and pepper. It had a little yeah, bit of seasoning. Course. It was a little bit different. They asked me to dance. Started dancing in front of people, um, and then done a um, went in the diary room, spoke to the diary diary room for about a minute, telling them why I should be on. Then done various different ta- group tasks. Um, and then literally didn't hurt anything, and I actually just um, time passed on, and I just assumed that I hadn't got on until round about 
two and a half weeks before the show started, I get a random phone call with a withheld number, which I nearly didn't answer because I thought it was, uh, I might have given me my number out to, to a lass. Yeah. It was, I'd actually been out in Whitley Bay. And <laughs> I, was, I, was dri- I, was dri- I was driving back from Whitley Bay and this withheld number call, and I thought, oh, I'm not going to answer that. And, and then um, and I thought, oh, and answered it. And then there was this um, southern female's uh, voice said, um, this is um, Steph from Big Brother. Um, like, can we? Can you make it to London tomorrow? We want to come and see you. Then from that, I the next day I met them. Uh, this was on a Thursday. Then, not on the Thursday, they they sent a producer to come out to see me and my family. Mm-hmm. Coincidentally, I was actually doing a show, the seventies show, on the night. So the producer came and watched the show. Oh, and then on the Friday, got told. Uh, I'll never forget getting told um, on the Friday I, I was a housemate. Then on the on the Saturday, I met someone in London, and then I was I got told to meet at a random location in London, and then I was taken to France, and I was hidden in France for two weeks before the show started because back then they didn't want anyone known yeah, who was yeah. on the show, and that the France the France trip was 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 a carnage experience because the chaperone was like a 26 year old lad who me and him got on fantastic so we were just we were just we were just on the piss we had a road trip to paris we had a we had a house there was parties it was crazy who knew you were going in just your parents at this point no there was um my parents my mum and grandma and there was two mates that two or three mates that knew but me it was funny that they'd obviously released um, who was going on the show around about Friday dinner time? Mm-hmm. So there was press that turned up at my grandma's house, and obviously my grandma, um, being as loyal she uh, as loyal as she is, um, she was she was acting oblivious. Saying, <laughs> I don't know. No, he's he's went he's went to dancing, like he's totally <laughs> play, totally playing Class. daft and, uh, and yeah. stuck to the story of like don't tell anybody. But obviously, the the release who was going on. What was it like walking through the doors, mate? Obviously, you've been a fan of the show. You've applied multiple times, and you're finally there. You, it's you. You're a housemate. What's yeah. that feeling actually like? Yeah. So that was v- v- quite hard to put into words, mm-hmm. but there was an extreme amount of adrenaline. There was an extreme amount of nerves. There was an extreme amount of being scared. There was extreme amount of being excited. There was all sorts going on. It mm-hmm. was, you know, but. Back then, it was it, it was on a huge pedestal mm-hmm. to me. You know, it was it was like this was this kind of dream that I had, and this yeah. something that I had a, on a pedestal that was going to try and potentially change my life up. So it was just extreme. And it, I think when I got on back in two thousand and five, it was right at the cresp of the of the wave of of Big Brother. Yeah, you'd had that's right. I you'd it really. I think on. I got on series six. On series five, they started making entrances, so it was like a real. It a was proper it, production. It started being a bit of a production then. Um, so it was it was mad. But the funny thing was, I remember um, I actually got booed. I Did got you? I got completely booed when I walked in. Um, Too confident, John. I give it the proper Charlie Big Bollocks. <laughs> um, it was be it was be, I, I, I almost I almost felt it was my duty. Because I, in the audition process, I give it the beginning. And, and to the producers, I was like saying, wait till you see, wait till you see my entrance. I'm oh, going to be dancing, high five and kissing. So I felt, I almost felt I have to give a performance here. But I, I, I did look a twat. Mm-hmm. By the end of it, I looked like totally cocky, over the top, and got booed. And I remember thinking in my head, it, fuck. Like, because that's, that's your worst fear. You, one of the worst fears. Um, Doing something like that is not being liked. Yeah, you know, of we we all we all want to be liked. Did you um, regret it at all for a split second when you were going in? And people were booing you. Were you like, Fuck, "I've made a mistake here"? You know, you know what? Um, deludedly or not, I was still a little bit confident because I thought, "Wait till you get, wait till you get to know me." Yeah. And that was something. Not being big headed, that was something that I was quite confident on. Being a nice, being a nice lad, it's something that I've always prided myself on. And is it the type of thing you'd go in with a game plan with? Is it is it that type of scenario? Obviously, I know it's a game show, but for you, were you like I'm just gonna exaggerate myself, or were you actually you on that show? Well, you know what, you we actually got asked that specific question, and that that question was actually filmed, and that 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 their answers were actually aired over the course. So everyone got asked, "What's your plan?" And my 
my answer was my plan is to have no plan and that was pretty much it apart from um i thought me being myself was the best opportunity of winning the show yeah um i obviously there was like you know, there was an, I, I was on occasion um, technically voting, but but again, that's just me. I've, I'm super competitive, so that was just me being business like yeah, yeah. in terms of, of. But I just thought, go on for fun, um, and let the result take care of itself. Mm-hmm. That was pretty much. I just thought, let, just go and have fun and relish it. And like I said, because I was such a fan, I was so I was genuine. I, fa- I found the whole process. Very easy. A lot of people were struggling with because I was in the house for seventy nine days, nearly yeah. nearly three months. Bloody hell! Be, but because I was just loving being on there, yeah, it it came out. So I was always upbeat. How much have you thought about when you were in the house? How much have you thought about me? Life's gonna change when I get out. Like this is gonna be mental. This I'm gonna get a following. I'm gonna get this, whatever it may be. I know was Instagram kicking. No, Instagram obviously wasn't no, kicking wasn't, around there. But no. but social media in general was so. Certain platforms will have been available to you then. I mean, I think YouTube. What was YouTube come out two thousand and five ish? If it, if it was, I wasn't. I wasn't. Um, like I'm a bit of a like I, I told you off ah, camera. Yeah. I'm a bit of a caveman, so ah. I I don't think I don't think there were. Did you think of a financial gain? I thought there would be. I thought there would be some financial gain. I was honestly, although I wanted to change my life up, I wasn't. Um, I was deluded of. The of have of kind of like of what how much things would change up how it would be like I remember coming off the show and I think the next week um, I always used to go to Whitley Bay um, on a bank holiday it mm-hmm. used to be renowned for a night out and I actually thought I would be able to go there and people would recognise us but it wouldn't be that much of a thing um, I actually had to um, I was getting ha- like bombarded with people that much I had to um jump in a random's car and got to get, me, and to, get to get me away. Um so I was a little bit um a little bit deluded to <coughs> kind of like how much things would change up that yeah. much. When you when you came out of the house, was again I, I've mentioned it a couple of times, but because for me, a lad from you know a, the area that I'm from, um Going on to a show like that, coming out, obviously seeing all the rewards, the bonuses, the perks, and all that good stuff. How did you know what to do when you were getting like booked for things? And like, how did you deal with that? Like, I've got oh, 300 screaming lasses, and obviously, you're a bit of a lad before you went in anyway. Obviously, doing that type of dancing and all that, you, you'll have been pulling knee left, right, and center. I'm sure you will have good looking lad. So, how did you deal with that? Were you like, well, to be fair, I kind of knew this? Or was it like, shit, this is kind of scary, this now? I'm, I'm going to the Metro Centre and I'm getting birds asking. Like, or was it not like that? Was it more of a respectful thing? Because um, I feel like now, Anth, like, with social media, I mean, I think it might have been Kevin Hart or someone said, you know, it's mad with social media. People feel like they know you. So, like, yeah. he, he goes, I'll go for a piss. And people want to shake me hand. I'm like, mate, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm in a restaurant with me, with me lass and, I'm, and you're hounding us for this, that, and the other. And I appreciate it, but there's a time and a place. Yeah. Obviously, then it was more, you're a probably more of a celebrity because you were on TV and that was really it. So when someone sees you, that's their only chance. Yeah. So how how did you deal with all that? You know what? The It was very much um, very much a whirlwind. It was... I think when, you, when you're when you young, you, you, I was just... I was a proper daft lad. So I was probably like a little that, a bit, little bit numb. Uh-huh. I didn't... I didn't even kind of like think about it that much i was just and it was it was you know at first it was unbelievable Mm -hmm. like i was absolutely all over it Mm -hmm. i was loving the personal appearances like going to nightclubs getting paid to go there and Mm -hmm. obviously there was i was a young single lad you know girls girls sort of talking to me first i didn't not being big-headed but that's you know it was just because of the how 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 big the show was Mm -hmm. so i was just loving it at first It, it it was kind of there was stuff like where you know you've got to do photo shoots and it you know it was it was very much alien do you know what I mean but I was just kind of rolling with it I was mm. literally just rolling with it and just th- and just thought you know what just like s- just smash it just you know try and make as much money as you can because I was I was aware of there was there was a bit of a window to it it's not yeah. like it's not like now. Where you know if you if you go on say Love Island, you potentially 
um, you really can pursue things because your social media following will say jump to two million and then you can whatever you get into you're going to have a good chance of doing well from it because you've got two three million followers mm -hmm. whereas the big brother thing there was there was an element of shelf you know, life your, your, your 15 minutes of fame yeah of so course. the the there was that um but it was it was our you know people were people were kind of like if you weren't super super nice which I always tried to be, but if you weren't super super nice, the the you people would very be sharp to say a bad opinion of yeah, you. Yeah, that's the frightening thing about um, it. But you know, at first, all in all, it was just like an, a a real high um, roller coaster ride. Did you feel the pressure to stay in shape in that? Because you're in kind of good nick when you're on the show, weren't you? So like, did you feel that pressure? Like I kind of I kind of just be eating loads of shit and that, and people are gonna spot us in public, and then the next um, thing you know, like. Or was it like now nah, that you just you? Eh, uh, well, I was. I've always kind of like I've always been into the gym. I've always, you know, I've always been into me appearance. Mm -hmm. I've always, you know, I um, I've always been. In, I'm a barber now. I'm in the hair industry. I've always been into me hair. Um, the probably maybe there was a, an element. I mean, I ended up. I brought out a, a terrible cheesy disco D, workout DVD. <laughs> so, <laughs> so with them. Um, that I, I brought out the fitness DVD shop after the I, I got off the show, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, which was terrible. Was it bad, was it? Yeah, it was terrible. My best man stuck it up on his best man speech, and he pretty much didn't even need to try. <laughs> he just got people to watch it, and everyone was right. just pissing themselves. Um, yeah, there was probably the probably maybe in reflection, um, the what the maybe was, but not nothing where nothing significant where I. Where I remember thinking, oh my god, I'm on TV now. I need to, I need to kind of look a certain way yeah. because I was a young, a young lad who was all already kind of into his appearance and into fashion and into all them type of stuff, really. So I was already kind of it was that. more in your lane, really. Anyway, I was already, honest. I was already like that, to be honest. Yeah, that's it's a, that's, a, that's the interesting one. Did anything negative come? And like in terms of, you know, like friends, did people tag along? Was people trying to? Getting involved with your ride, like trying to get a bit of your success, like oh um, I know him as well, like can I come? Like, was that or was it not that? Did you lose any friends along the way? Well, I've I'm very fortunate about um, I'm very lucky with the with the friends I've got. I've got like you know I just mentioned my me best mate, me and my best mate went to nursery together. We've right. been we've been friends literally since we were five, and we're still we're like we're like brothers. And there's a there's a core of us that are school friends. Mm -hmm. So I've always had that core of friends. Um, was the negatives? Yeah, absolutely. There was mm -hmm. um, you know Big Brother's come back now, and I've been doing you know off the back of Big Brother coming back, I've been doing a, a lot of interviews and it's something that I've um, briefly, um, something I've touched on about kind of like, in reflection, um, when I'd done Big Brother, it was a very, very extreme taste of fame. You, you might not get many more extreme tastes of fame really in terms of you know if, you, if you're an actor you make and you, your career develops and you build and you can actually see this, um, you know, things starting to progress and people know you, or if you're a singer, bands start getting bigger gradually, gradually. Whereas I was um, a young lad who, although I'd had a you know a little bit of taste of being on stage, I was still um, just a run-of-the-mill normal lad who mm -hmm. lived in County Durham. I lived with my grandparents and my mum. And then I got catapulted into living in a house for three months and then coming out, everyone knowing your name, making um making money that I would never that I'd never ever made before, doing loads of kind of like celebrity type of stuff, photo mm -hmm. shoots, loads of different stuff. And I, and like I touched on before, there was there was a there's a kind of a window um yeah. to to kind of to make money and there was a window of the fame. When that fame kind of started to dwindle and the years passed by and the years passed by, um it did. It got to the point where it was like, oh, what do I, what do I do next? Um, was that a scary thing to go through? Oh yeah, because like oh yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. It was, it was, um, yeah, it was very hard. It was like, you know, yeah, you, you, as as men, you've all got egos. You're probably not when you're younger. You're not aware of your ego. And obviously, I I was like, well, I've I've one big brother. Um, you know, I I don't want to go back to. 
I'm, I don't want to go back to a day job because ah, that would be frightening, was, like, wouldn't it? I was, I was, I was so paranoid what people would would think because uh, anyone who knew me, it was always like, oh, you're from Big Brother. It's yeah. Andy from Big Brother. So I'd really kind of like, um, that was kind of my label. So the th the thought of kind of going back to a job, um, terrified me, and then it kind of slowly but surely kind of went got me into like a real real kind of dark place. Mm -hmm. Um, How dark did it get for you? Um, yeah, it got it got it got really like was really it dark. like a lot of time on your own drinking? Yeah, drugs turned, all that yeah, type of stuff. Turned 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 to um, turned to all that in in reflection. That's that's a classic trait. What what men do? They might you want to you want to you want to go away from the real reality. So you'll kind of like go out all the time, and it'll it'll take you it'll take you away, um, and but it's but like the the laws I wouldn't change any of the laws because it's formed me who I am to now. Um, now I'm I speak on men's mental health. I do guest speaking on men's mental health. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm a barber who cuts hair and talks to men for a living, mm -hmm. and. Being in a really dark place, it was something that for for a, for a long time I was quite um, shameful about and, and embarrassed, and I kept to myself um, because you know you don't be, being a, being a being a being a man. Mm -hmm. You uh, by trait we don't ever want to show weakness, yeah, and of but but being a but getting back into I did realize things need to change. When I was in a dark place, I I'm so so thankful that I had the self awareness where I thought. Things need things need to change up here, and luckily enough, I had the the self awareness, and I kind of got back into hairdressing, and barbering, which was something that was that was a passion, um, and yeah, I changed things up. I moved away from Newcastle, and then from making them small steps in terms of a right move, my life started making momentum again, and. In terms of the mental health, being a barber, men, it's the one time where men open up and they start kind of, I've dealt with numerous cases of um, men in, in not good places, but that, that enabled me to start sharing my story. Yeah, of and course. it's when you've, if, if you're in a dark place and you speak to someone who's been in a, in a bad place, but who's actually come out the other end, those, there's, the, the, those words are golden because you, you can really resonate it like, all oh, right, like he's, he's felt the same, um, but he's actually come out of it. And it's something that I'm um, really passionate about uh, trying to tackle this problem with men's mental health, I feel, as a barber, it's it's a, I love being a barber. It's like honestly, it's to me, it's like it's not even like a job when I go to work. Yeah, to me, it, it's not but like we've got we've got such a unique, we've got such a unique role where we we talk to people and people tell you the most, you know, the most secretive stuff. As mm -hmm. barbers, every, every pretty much most hairdressers and barbers will tell you the same thing. I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, no, I know. See, it's it's funny because it's like my barber. He might say to me something like that potentially another you know, client like you know what I mean. There's a lot of gossip. There's a lot of that type of stuff. And what I love, and it's the same as doing this podcast, like uh, like there's no phones. I haven't got my phone on. You haven't got yours. Yeah, we're having a chat. We're looking at each other in the eyes. We're having a conversation. Like men don't do that. Yeah. It, well, people don't do that. How many times you you probably done it yourself where you'll go for a meal with your lass and your phones up and you this that and the other and it's like fucking hell. Like you come like sometimes I come out I'm thinking like. Fucking hell, I just wanted to chat. Like, sometimes you do, don't yeah. you? That's why a lot of good chats are when you're driving and stuff. And Yeah, yeah. Being a barber, I can see why you love doing that because, again, no one's got... Not no. many people are going to be sitting on the phone while they're engaged with you. It's kind of you're in there for that crack. Yeah. And that's the thing. And I know you mentioned potentially doing looking at doing your own podcast or something at some point. And I would definitely encourage you to do that because you're getting a lot of people, like you say, who are speaking to you, they're opening up, and only good can come from that. There's never anything bad can come from doing a podcast you're encouraging chats it's good for mental health and it's giving people a space to actually go out and do something and again you know what even if i just i mean you don't even know me but it's nice to have the chat you know what i mean oh, it's absolutely like, yeah. and i think and i think it's really important so mate, i would definitely encourage you doing that because i think well for one i think you'll do well um but secondly it's gonna it'll definitely give you peace of mind in knowing that you're doing something good for other people what i want to ask you is getting into hairdressing and obviously i know that you'd kind of been doing that over the years and stuff and you know you kind of refound your love for it and, and opened up a shop and stuff from a from a business and entrepreneurial point of view, 
did you feel like it was going to be success from the from the get go because of your name, or did you think no, like, I've just got the same chance as anybody at doing well with the shop? Um, no, I thought I think um, the big you know we've touched on the big brother the big brother experience. Mm-hmm. Um, there's highs, there's lows, but I've always I've always took positives from from that experience mm-hmm. and the big brother experience. Still to this day, some it still opens doors, yeah. and I I was kind of like. I was kind of confident in thinking, well, I'm going to probably have a little bit of a head start in terms of um, get, you know, my brand or my business being out there. And obviously, when I, f- when I first um, set up business, you know, all the local newspapers were, you know, all in touch. Yeah, I remember get, seeing all the stuff. Getting, get, getting it out there. So I, I, was, um, I was quite aware of that I'll probably have a little bit of a head start just purely based on, on the kind of... the the, the the profile that I that I did have, All so right. yeah, Rath, but I always tried to, um, I always just take positive positives from it. Yeah. Did you did you have a bar as well? Did you have did you something to do with that? Did you have yeah, a bar or a restaurant yeah, so or something as no, well? No, so it was a it was a it was a mixed um it was a mixed use. So it was right. basically so it was a um, it was an idea that I had where I just thought how how cool would it be if I um, was cutting hair, but then also had a bar i just thought it was just the uh i just thought it was the coolest concept and it was so many people told me that it was a terrible idea and they just they didn't have the vision but they were like well you're gonna get hair everywhere and it's and i'm and, and i'm in my head i was like well the barbershop's gonna be in a separate room yeah, like of course. and it why do people where why do people get the haircut a lot of the time it's because they're going out and it's just very social and i it's you know I remember listening to an Arnold Schwarzenegger um, kind of saying he said like naysayers and he was like if someone told me that it's not been done before or it's it's not a good idea he was like that motivated me to do it more and that was something that that did motivate me to do it more I was speak I was speak I remember my mum my mum told us not to do it. she was like mm, don't think it's a good idea mm-hmm. there was another couple of people whose opinions I really respected who were saying don't think it works yeah, yeah, yeah. and I was like nah it does. It does but work. you know what though? It's it's your trajectory though, because people have probably thought you applying for Big Brother was a bad idea. You know what yeah. I mean? There's gonna be people yeah. who think that and look what yeah. it's give you a life. Well, I, really. I always think um I always think it's good to be deluded. Mm-hmm. Because I think if you speak to anyone who's kind of done anything anything good or uh, you know, they've always probably been a bit deluded. Aye. Um, you know, anyone who's done anything Amazing. Yes. I, you've you've you know got what, to be deluded. <laughs> I used to get called it all the time. Yeah, but I am deluded. <laughs> I, like, and that's what I'm saying. I think you're right, mate. I agree with you 100%. Uh, got us in the fields up because I remember when I was before the content PT business. So basically, I create content for a lot of fitness people and brands and, and people like that and influencers, if you like. But before that, mate, I, I filmed a lot of musicians, rappers, singers. I used to go up and down to London, Manchester, all over the place. Literally on a mega bus, mate, on my own with a backpack. I wasn't going out on the lash. <laughs> that's what I was doing. I was filming these people coming out of like, I don't know, I could have been coming out of a, a record label on Kensington High Street in London or whatever. And I was just trying to get a few a bit of footage stick on YouTube and stuff and got a few lads on X Factor. They end up like getting really far and end up filming celebrities and all that. And I was, I was but I made no money, mate. I made no Aye. money at all from it. And I remember thinking That's the hard know, thing, isn't they it? Were like, you're mad you though. I was like, mate, I can't be in Asda all because I was working at Asda at the time as well. I was like, Aye. I can't do that, mate, all my life. Like, I just I know there's something more. And they're like, I know, but if you're not making money doing this, just jack it in. And I'm like, but that's because you feel like you couldn't do it. Mm-hmm. In, and I couldn't even see where the money was coming from but I was like I just know nah, I love it so much I'm going to make something Aye. but mate I did it for nine years I didn't make any money out of it I made a few quid here and there but it wasn't Aye. it was not really major obviously I had gold then of so what was the what was that like what was the business model then so what? the well there wasn't really one so what it was was I was initially just filming singers putting them on YouTube they'd get a couple of hundred thousand views they might get signed potentially. I would try and take a cut as a manager from them. That was right, the okay. idea. Never really worked that way. They were just getting a shitload of clout. They were getting booked for stuff, and no one knew about me. And I was like, right, sound. But I was never the man on camera. Right. So no one was really asked about who shot the video. It was all about the guy on the video. So when they're getting all these views and the attention and their followings building, I'm like, but I'm going back to my bedroom at my Mars thinking, I'm skint. Right. And that was, that's what was happening. It was like, everyone was like, you're the man. Like, people who thought I was doing well, because the saws with Tiny Temper, Ed Sheeran, Dabby, whoever it was. Yeah. They were like, fucking hell, like, you're smashing it. But I weren't. And that that's... So what I decided to do was turn it into a community interest company. So I thought, right, if I can get, like, buildings to film things and studios and start getting grants from the government. And, but I was yeah. like, look, mate, like, because I knew even... 
you know, the the um, director of Oxfam. The guy's probably a millionaire, mate, because obviously the top guys at charities need the maybe volunteers under them, but they've still got to be paid to run an organisation. Yeah. So that was kind of my model. But then I turned into social enterprise, and I was just mate, like, this is this is just too much graft. How am I ever going to buy a house like yeah. making like eight grand in a year? And I was like, this is. So I end up having a few different businesses, working in the corporate world, and then I end up falling in love with this type of stuff and lost loads of weight myself. And I've got a, a big network in fitness anyway, so I know quite a few people who are doing really well in the, in the yeah. scene. So I reach out to them. I was like, let's just create some content. The next thing you know, ads, I need more. I need more. Fuck. So there's people who need content. Right, okay. You know, you sell a barber shop. I've got, I've had barbers on there. I've had tattooists. Like, and once you start posting content consistently and it's sexy, it's banging. Mm -hmm. You're like, fuck, I want more of this shit. Ads, yeah. and you come down and shoot a bunch of content because I do it in such an effective way. Yeah. In an efficient way, it's almost like so I can pop in for a couple of hours, you've got enough content last year a month. Oh, really? A bit like, fucking hell, that's pretty cool. So I ended yeah. up doing that and then building it that way. But that was never the plan. But the point of all that was really, I knew that there was something I needed to do on my terms. Yeah. And that's not because of like arrogance or I, w I just wasn't happy, mate. I felt empty yeah. going to jobs. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was always like, fucking hell, like, I'm a, I'm a lad from Sunderland. Like, can I get out of this? And I looked around at other people, I was like, well, everyone's doing like the nine till five. So I don't even have a blueprint. I can't even say how did you do it because no one was doing it. Yeah, So yeah. I was like, fuck, like I'm on my own here. And now I feel like all my, the main people, are I've still got me, me friends from school, a bit like yourself. Yeah. Lovely lads, love them a bit, but the people, and I don't really speak to them um, a lot now, unfortunately, but the people who I know now are people who I see, like people yeah. I do podcasts with, people who I'll be in business with, creating content with. They're like more my friends now because they have all got the same goal as me. Yeah. And yeah. with you leaving, obviously, the show and going into barbering and doing everything you're doing, did you find that as well? Do you find find that you are attracted to or understand people more with, you know, people who are hungry and they want to do different things? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You want to, you obviously want to um, surround yourself with kind of people who's of the same, of the same kind of like, m like mindset, really. Mm -hmm. I mean... It's funny, I think it's a lot of it's to do with the stage that you're at in your life. I mean, everything everything for me really now is me, me family. Like, yeah. uh, you know, I've got I've got a little two year old, I've got a wife, um I've got me me best I've got my best mates, um, but I don't see that much of them. Yeah, because so. you know, when you've got when you've got work, uh, family life and stuff, um, you don't really kind of get to you know, you're just at it. I, I love staying in now. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? I absolutely love staying in. But yeah, you just, you kind of, you know, you you do tend to surround yourself with people who are on the same path. And obviously that's that's where you are. Yeah, yeah um, And, you know, I remember um, when I was going out in Newcastle and stuff, I, you know, had a, had a load of mates, who, a load of friends there, you know, a lot of acquaintances. And I remember thinking, I, um, not in a, not in a, like a, from no like um, malice point, but I just thought I I have to get away from you because I don't want to be uh, I don't want to be in this company anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you on that one. With you, obviously, you've got a family, you've got a wife. Um, how did you manage to navigate that relationship? Obviously, I know <clears throat> she does something completely different to you. Um, but w did you ever find that when you were trying to find your partner or your significant other at the time, did you struggle with like trusting people as well? Did that ever was that ever a thing, or were you not like were you just kind of like were you always got to kind of vetting people? Because like for me, our last Abby, she's she, she's from the area, she's she's classmate, and, and yeah. I've known her over the years and stuff, and I, I couldn't think of anyone else in the world who understands me. I know that's quite yeah. like soppy, but yeah, I, it's mad because like. I always say she's the content PT. Like she's yeah. the she's behind the business because like I get to do amazing things with my business and it's phenomenal. But without that person, they wouldn't get it. Yeah. How many people are gonna understand that? Look, I'm traveling to a gym in London, then I'm flying over to Ocean Beach to do a podcast with Wayne Lineker, then the next thing you know, I'm creating content with a man United footballer, then the next like yeah. that's not the norm for most people. Yeah. So to get with someone like that, how how has that been with you? Like, did you find that you got support easily? That understood you. How or was that like a hard process? Um, I think it was. It was kind of. It was. I would say it was quite easy to be honest because, like, I wasn't really when I met my missus. I wasn't really living, you know, living a very normal life. Mm -hmm. To be perfectly honest, you know yeah. the 
the um, the Big Brother kind of like fame and all that type of stuff was completely um, completely gone. Really, did she know you from it though? Yeah, she did. Did you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I um, ask. Was no, it not she, one of them ones where she's like, oh, I'd never seen you before. I don't know who you are. Like, she did keep our cards close to our chest in regards to um, in regards to no, to knowing me. We 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 met in the hair salon actually. Did you? I don't know. I don't know hair. Um, and right for right from the off, I could um, like she just oozed oozed like this is definitely someone who I would love to take out. Amazing. Um, but them type of them type of females probably always stay, stayed away from me. Yeah. Like someone with the qualities that I was wanting, the big brother, the big brother card was a was a red flag. Yeah. Um, so it did actually take me. Um, it did take me ages to kind of, you know, to initially get a first date. But it was quite. It, it was quite good with me and my wife because we. I mean, I was, you know, trying. I, I fancied her. Mm-hmm. Um, but we did kind of be, we did we were we struck up a friendship because she, I she was in the hair salon all mm-hmm. the time and back the hair salon that I worked at it um it had it had such a great vibe around it it was such the the, the boss the boss was absolutely a scream um I lived with a lad who I worked together it was a, it was a it was a unisex hair salon but it was full of straight males yeah so yeah, it was yeah, the, yeah, the, ba- the the band the banter was absolutely flying and she actually my wife worked at she was in between jobs at the time and she worked at this cocktail bar that turned into my local right. um so i was always kind of she was always behind the bar and i was and and then she and then we would see each other in the hair salon and i was constantly at the bar basically kind of like trying to you know, chat her up basically, <laughs> and uh, it just happened naturally. But but we were both kind of like I think I was, I think I was thirty, um, and I think she was twenty six, twenty seven, and we were probably I was at a stage where I was kind of you know I was wanting to, you know I was wanting having a family, being married. There was something that appealed to me. Yeah. There was something that I that I wanted. I wanted to meet, meet a nice woman and have a family. And have, and have kids. That's amazing, like. It's amazing. Um. So yeah, it just happened. All, there was it just happened kind of naturally. The best naturally. way, that, isn't it? Like the organic way. Do you? A bit of a, a bit of a question for you, mate. Do you ever regret things you've done on TV? Your kids seeing. No. No. No, I don't. You know, Do I you don't. Know? No, because for me, life's life's a journey. Um, mistakes are lessons, and you can take positives from it, and it's. I'd done stuff, you know, I you know on say Big Brother. There was you know I was drunk on national TV, but I mean I didn't hurt anyone, and it was just it was at the time I was young, single, daft as a brush, having a good time, and yeah, I think I don't I don't to be honest I don't really regret anything because I just think it's all part of the life journey. Yeah, that's amazing. That man. I think that's what it's all about. You've literally just been yourself through a process, and I think it's amazing. What kind of advice could you give to someone who wants to be an influencer, wants to get on Love Island, wants to get on the next Big Brother? If you could like just take them in the corner and they tell you, "I'm going to get on the show," what kind of advice would you give them? Um, first and foremost, I would say, uh, you know, go on for fun. Um, you know, if you're doing it. If you're doing it for the right reasons, where you kind of just you know you might, you want to you want to go on there, you want to have fun. If you're in a good headspace, you've got to be thick skinned, um, and that's something that when you're younger, you 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 you, you struggle with. Yeah. Um, this is why you know we've had bad you know we've had suicides um, from Love Island. Yeah. People being on there, um, people are when you're young, you 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 you. You don't look at it like you do from a wiser head. Like you know, if someone says something bad, if a stranger or someone online said something bad about me, literally water water off a duck's back. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's if someone's going to say something bad about you that don't know you, they're clearly in a bad place. Yeah, that's and it's it, just it? it's a result of them. So just be thick skinned and just go and enjoy yourself, really, and don't take things too serious. Unbelievable, mate. What do you what do you think of Big Brother? That's on at the minute. Yeah, I was really interested in watching it. It's it's had a nice rest. Um, Do you ever sit and look and go, I was in there? 
Or is it like a different thing now? Do you just watch it as a viewer? Or is it like, no, I know how he must feel going into that. Like, do you know what I mean? Does that, yeah, is yeah. it that type of... You know what? Like, this this one here, I've probably looked at, I've looked at it a lot more like that. Um, and I think it's just because it's been such a long time. It's been off our screens for such a long time. And now I'm kind of like a 40, 41-year-old married man with a son um, with a lot more experience. And, and it's quite cool to watch. And it's just, you know, watch watching it um, watching it unfold, how conversations happen and how different things. Yeah, it's just, it is quite intriguing to watch some of that, that I've done myself. Anthony Hutton. It's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show, mate. Thanks very much for having Thanks. me. You're very respectful bloke, uh, and I've really enjoyed myself. You enjoyed it? Loved it, mate. Pre- I really appreciate you asking me. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Thank you. Legend. Cheers, Cheers mate. Cheers, mate.